We're out here rabbit hunting right now to one of my old legendary spots from years ago. <laughs> We're gonna be doing a catch and cook out here with rabbits. You can see we got a little drumstick right there, the back leg of a rabbit that we're gonna be frying up and seeing how good it tastes. And uh, hopefully it turns out good. I'm not sure, I'm quite curious on how it's gonna turn out. This is jackrabbit, and uh, you guys are definitely in for an exciting video today. We got the good old meal behind us. You guys saw this in the, the elk video. Our friend Giuliano actually let us borrow it, and we're out here gonna do some rabbit hunting today. It's been a while since uh, we've actually been out here rabbit hunting. This is like one of our OG spots. Hopefully we can find the cottontails, maybe even some quail. There's some good guzzlers out here that we've found quail before. It's just going to be a good time. It's going to be fun. Uh, whatever we uh, shoot today, we're actually going to cook it out here again like we did with that striper last video. So that's going to be fun. It's going to be interesting. Now let's get right to it. This this belt right here, it's crazy because I was actually gifted this, this belt for shells years ago. Years and years ago and I still use it every time I go out rabbit hunting. Raymond, right? Yeah, yeah. Raymond. Raymond, it's just cool. Hawkeye. He, he took his rabbit hunting one of the first times out here. Yeah, yeah. One of my very first times ever rabbit hunting, Raymond took us out and we got on a bunch of jackrabbits. I actually think that video's got like a million views. That one, that was years ago, but I just thought I'd mention that. It's pretty cool, you know, a gift. And I still use it to this day. So, same old Mossberg 500 that we've had for a lot of years. This thing, everything from coyotes to doves rabbits pretty much it all i think seniors even shot a buck with this years ago so i'm using seven and a half shot in case we get into some coil and then i got four shot in case uh you know we're just gonna be finding some rabbits so it really depends what we're finding i like using the seven and a half when we're shooting at the quail and then uh obviously like i said the four for the rabbits just a little bit bigger puts them down a little faster but um should be fun what are you shooting today and this is at uh cz Oh, yeah? Yeah. Let's see what you got here. You know, just a start off model. You know, it's about, uh, say, four or something. Cool. You know, because I'm just getting into hunting, so. It looks good. Nice and clean. Yeah. You shot anything with it yet? Uh, my shoulder. <laughs> gonna get its first blood today. Yeah. Awesome. I hope so. There's gonna be a few people asking what choke we're running right now. I am personally running a modified choke in my barrel. Um, I know a lot of people might not even know what a choke is. Sometimes I tell, you know, my buddies what chokes I'm hunting with and stuff and they don't know what it is. So uh, really what a choke is, just kind of narrows down your shot. The tighter your choke is, the tighter your shot gets out a little bit farther. The looser it is, the wider the shot is closer. So um, I'm using a modified, which is like right in between. It's that good distance I find usually when I go rabbit hunting. When I uh, coyote hunt, I usually use an improved cylinder. But as far as today goes, modified choke um i brought my full choke too i think if you know if they're staying out farther and they're not getting close enough to where i can't hit them i'll switch it out to a full choke and that'll just help me touch them out a little bit farther if they're not if they're busting up far but um i just thought i'd add that in real quick modified choke the mule the mules on a ranch uh every day of its life it works every day of its life with horses and this is what we call ranch rust right Cottontail heaven right here, you know what? Yes, sir. Let's do it. <sighs> this is where we're gonna limit out today. <laughs> All right, we're ready. Um, what we usually do to start is we'll walk to the base of this little mountain here, cut around, walk through this valley, and just do a little loop back to the to the mule. Then we'll kind of switch up spots a little bit. You guys down? Yep. Let's do it. Okay. And then uh, you want right side or left side? I'll give you left side to start. It's a little bit easier as a right-handed person, and just it, it's split down the middle. So everything middle that way is you, anything that way. Is you. So don't shoot right at all. Yeah, if I mean if it's forward a little bit, you can, but just you know not straight right, because I'll be straight righty. <laughs> <laughs> So these rabbits, they, they stay real, real hidden in these bushes and they'll jump out when you get like five feet away. One of our old pieces of advice we'd always give, which still is good. A lot of times like seniors explaining when you get these real thick bushes, they won't jump. So every once in a while it's good to kind of sit back, 
wait a little bit and you get rocks just chuck them chuck them at some of the bushes every once in a while if there's one hiding in the bush they'll take off dart and you get a shot at them Hit the bush. <laughs> There's been a lot of people hunting here lately. Hunting shells everywhere. Anywhere in the desert where there's water, there's gonna be animals close by. This one's a small game guzzler. Made for the quail and the rabbits and stuff like that. I'm sure coyote can get in there too if he needs it, but this is mainly for the small game. As it rains, the rain hits that, it goes down into this tray, down that pipe, and there's water. There's water in there for small game, quail, all that stuff. Here we go. Badger hole. Balloons. There's balloons all in this desert from Vegas. We're like down one to Vegas. We find balloons everywhere. Look at that hawk right there. Yeah, can you hear him? He landed right there. Did he? He's on top of that tree. Oh, shoot. I heard him land. I was wondering what that was. Yeah, that thing's cool. Well, there's not going to be any quail around here. <laughs> I've been seeing a lot of shells, too. There's been a lot of people hunting in here recently. But we'll, we'll, take, we'll find them. So we're out here. This is a good way to exercise. A lot of people like going on hikes or walking through their neighborhoods or whatever. We just enjoy coming out here and hunting. Well, that sucked. I don't know, check your steps. I think it was a pretty good walk. We did a big loop and only saw one jackrabbit, which Adrian took about a 50 yard shot on it, missed it. It was a lot of bushes. Yeah, it's a far shot. Well, we're gonna have to find one quick. If not, we're gonna have to eat McDonald's. <laughs> they changed the whole McDonald's. <laughs> I brought a oh. bag. <laughs> I need some energy. 1.8 miles. That's it? Yeah. We only I was going to say two. Now. Wow. Yeah. So we probably a little bit far. out of shape. Uh, you want some of this? No. Adrian? No. I'm good. Energy? Yeah, we're just going to do a little loop here. We're going to drive around, stop, do a quick little pass somewhere. And then, uh, you know, if there's going to be rabbits in there, we'll find them pretty quick, I think. Who said I don't snow in the desert? <laughs> Last little patch of snow. Coming at you. Coming at me? Yep. I'm going to chase him towards you. Yeah. He's right there. He's going hey, hey, he's coming at me. He's coming at me right now. Oh, yeah. There you go, Aiden. Come on. You're getting rusty. Man, he was running right at me. Because I will never shoot at one over there. Yeah. You should have blasted him. literally 10 feet from me. Well, you should have blasted him. No, Adrian's sitting right there. Ah, uh, the shotgun pellets won't go that far. Cottontail? Oh, it's a jack. Look how close he's standing right there, right there. You shoot, see? shoot. He's just right there in front of him. It was five feet from him just sitting there. Did you get him? Let's go up. It was standing there like... Yo, it might have saved the day. That thing was staring you in the eyes. <laughs> and that thing was sitting like five feet from you. Yeah, but I was totally strapped up. I was like, yeah. I didn't know where the mule was. I was worried. Joey came through. Nice. Oh, it's a nice one, one too. Heck yeah. I think I shot him kind of high. That's See an eight, eight, eight pounder. Perfect. We got one. Yep. You saved the catch and cook. First blood. <laughs> First blood with the new shotgun. I like saw the that. back of him, that's why I saw it. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. I saw when you uh, said that, I looked over there and I saw you had your shotgun on the sling and he was just sitting, just staring at you. <laughs> worse than a sling. I mean, I had it like totally strapped up so yeah. I didn't have to hold it or anything. I was, I, I got turned around over there and I was like, did I pass the mule? You know, yeah. so I was more worried about that. Yeah. Cool. Awesome, man. Uh, wrong turn. Ends up. Up. ends up bad. I wonder, yeah. I didn't. <laughs> I was looking for tracks of ours.
Heck yeah, we got one. That's awesome. It's a little bit of hiking for that guy, huh? Yeah. For him to be right by the mule, huh? He was only 100 yards away. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna he's gonna be some some good eating. He's nice and furred up. Yes, sir. He's got real nice. Food. He's fat too. Got that fat winter coat. It's been freezing out here. There was snow the last week, but it just melted, so oh. it's nice and healthy. All right, that's everything we got. Nice pan, burner, stain, got some propane, tongs, knife, paper towels, and uh, I think that's all we need. I got my seasonings in the truck, and what else I got in there? Some oil. Alright, so this is the rabbit right here. I don't want to get demonetized showing too much of the cleaning portion of this, so the next time you guys see this guy, it's just going to be the meat we're going to cook. Alright, so this is our flour mix we're going to be using. Pollo powder, garlic powder, black pepper, and flour. Extremely easy, that's the way I like doing things. Everything I always cook is extremely easy, just a few little, you know, ingredients. And uh, it works out great. Alright, so we got the back straps. What I'm going to be doing to these back straps, we're going to cut them into little bite-sized pieces. Then we got a whole back leg that we're going to be cooking right now. Here's our flour mix. Pretty much this is all we're going to be doing. Little bite-sized pieces. Just like that. It'll help them cook through a little bit faster. And it's just a little bit easier. I mean, you could pretty much make like a little chicken tender out of this. But this is how we're going to be doing it today. Alright, so after you get your pieces in there of what you're going to be frying up, you close your bag up. See all the uh, back strap pieces are in there? Then you just give it a good mix. You want them all to be evenly coated. Mix it up. Give it a good shake. Well, now I got it all shooken up, I'm going to go ahead and add this leg. I didn't add it at first because I don't want to get the powder too wet at once. But here we go. There we go. Everything's coated in there. Now it's time to start getting ready to cook. Got the heat going. There's our pan. Got our oil. So now we're just waiting for that to get hot. <laughs> yeah, it, it can be. It's a little bit gamey normally. Well, I can smell it's, the game. Yeah, it's not that bad though. It's it's pretty good. You just you gotta cook it right. This is our first time ever deep frying jackrabbit. I always try some random other stews and stuff with jackrabbit, but uh, we're gonna be trying something different today. I mean. You can never go wrong frying, right? I mean, you would think so, but we'll see for sure. With this, we got little jackrabbit nuggets and a drumstick, so it's gonna look like chicken when we're done. Just a red chicken. Like a uh, meat eater did a thing in Mexico. When he went down to Mexico, they cooked some. Oh, like in the, Mexico, they yeah, make everything good. The local guys down there. Oh yeah, the, just the way makes like the Mexican way of cooking. It, it's made for real gamey meat. We eat goats and stuff like that. And you're familiar with goats. Goats are real gamey meat too. And the way my grandma cooks it, though, like you'll never know. <laughs> you guys know how I test it. Yep. You're about it. Two fifty. It's right getting there. hot. Oh yeah, it's starting to fry a little bit. So it's crazy that you could just come out here and there's an pretty much an unlimited food source. You can kill as many rabbits as you want, or at least uh, the jackrabbits. Mm -hmm. Come out here and eat as many as you want. So if it's a good meat, then I mean, it's yeah. pretty cool. It's an unlimited meat source. So we were <coughs> originally wanting to get on some cottontails today, because cottontails are good eating. So we were running through some of our cottontail spots and you know didn't see a lot of rabbits in general. Juliano got the one rabbit for today, uh, which saved the video. Save your beginner's yeah. luck. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we got a jackrabbit at least. We got some jack. If this turns out really good, we got some jackrabbit spots. Or you know you you know I call my jackrabbit spots for a reason. We'll never see a cottontail and see a lot of jackrabbits. So it'd be neat to go through there and do something similar to this with a little bit more. But you know, good day today. This is the first sunny, hot day. Uh, you know, of in the last like month, I think. So I think that's one of the main reasons that the rabbits weren't moving a lot, but. Um, we still got one and that's plenty right now for a good taste test and um, see if we found a new way to cook them. We're going to start with the nugget. Do it. You ready? First drop. Oh yeah. 
thing and drop. It's looking nice and brown. What do you think? What I think is the price of meat in a store right now, if this does taste good, this is going to be a lifesaver. <laughs> I think you should have left the leg longer. You just cut it. That was going to be my handle for the thumbnail. <laughs> it's not good. It looks fancy. It looks good. It's actually turning out looking amazing. It smells good. And uh, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, I think in the French restaurants, those are like $100 a plate. <laughs> yeah. It looked like a gourmet, like, yeah. chicken leg. <laughs> or the rare hair. The rare hair. <laughs> <laughs> the hair. You say jackrabbit on these videos and I oh, that's a hair. <laughs> <laughs> We're cooking up some hair people? today. I don't you know. Any people from Britain or what? <laughs> oh, that's a hair. I, I feel like I sound <laughs> weird though, kind of saying it's a hair. <laughs> well, that's a hair. I mean, it might be, but you know, over here in Nevada, we call them jackrabbits. So go ahead and comment down below if you think it's a hair so that we can laugh at you. <laughs> it's Nevada. <laughs> Nevada. <laughs> first piece. That's the first one you put in. Yeah. I can tell. Alright. We are ready for the taste test. Look at that. I think the pan went out. I'm just going to leave it out. I don't know. I think it's a little burnt. I don't think so. Maybe too long. Crack that open? Alright. Crack it open, let me see how, how dark it really is. Yeah, we put it in the sunlight. In the sunlight. Focus. Focus down in the sun. Look at how dark that meat is. It is so dark. Did you put sugar in this? No. There's something sweet. The oil? <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't know. serious. You'll see. <clears throat> I put a uh, garlic powder, pepper, and foil powder. I don't have any problem with that mm. at all. Yeah, it's Seriously, crunchy. it actually tastes pretty good. I think it, uh, the grease on the outside got a little bit too hot, too hot, so when it blackened it, it too much. But the meat's actually not too good. It looks like roast beef. When it cooked thin like that, when we cut it thin, it's like crunchy, like a chip. The taste kind of has like a deerish kind of flavor to it. Yeah. It's actually pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. This is actually this surprising. Is a little thicker. Yeah, so he's got a little bit so bigger. Like, you can see it looks like roast beef. That one's going to oh, be fine. Man. It's, yeah, it's so black. And you yeah, it. it's overcooked. Yeah, yeah. We overcooked it. We wanted to be safe because it's hard, like I was mentioning when we were at meat, it's hard to kind of control the temperature with that thing. It's a little, you know, you can't really control your grease temperature and stuff. And then we wanted to be safe to make sure it's cooked through. And um, we kind of burned it a little bit, I think. But to be honest, like oh. this was a really thin piece right here. It was. It's pretty good, to be honest. What about the thick one? Was it good? I'm gonna cook all mine that that burnt then. Yeah. Survival, survival situation. I would. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm gonna come and get more. I mean, I'm gonna cook them like just like this though. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's dark. I mean, you're saying it's burnt, but it tastes delicious. Yeah. It's good. It's good. Yeah, thank you, yeah. I just did a thick piece. It was just fun. Put a little bit of ranch on it. Oh yeah, chicken. Yeah, chicken wings are stupid expensive too. New chicken wings. <laughs> what do you think? This actually turned out surprisingly good. I'm not gonna lie. It's it's actually really really good. As far as jackrabbit goes, this is up there. Like 10 out of 10 status. I think it's still super tender. On the thicker pieces, the one thing is, I think we cooked it a little bit too long. You know, it could have you had a little bit less time, but it's still really good. And another thing that I'll probably do next time is cut the nuggets just a little bit thinner and not cook them as long. They're they're really good when they're thin and, you know, they're real crunchy and stuff. But these thicker pieces, like this one I'm eating now, still perfectly fine. This is, I'm telling you right now, this was actually a surprise to me. Because normally jackrabbit, it's good if you cook it right, but you can mess it up really easy too to where it'll be real gamey and stuff. But this right here... I'm actually surprised. This is by far the favorite way I've cooked jackrabbit. And I guess we were predicting it beforehand, right? You can never go wrong deep frying anything. But, um, I mean, if you're going to eat jackrabbit, this is a must try right here for sure. Survival situation. 
Oh, yeah. That's a good meal right there for yeah. survival. Survival situation. This is like gourmet right here. <laughs> like, look at this. Gourmet. <laughs> That's a big drum right there. Yeah. We're going to take pictures of it, and then we're going to do a taste test on it. All right, we are eating up this drumstick right now. It's a little bit tough, but it still has amazing flavor. To be honest, it turned out really good. It's juicy. It's good. It's just tough. Now, if you got the drumsticks and maybe you marinated them, maybe you did something to them, you know, stabbed them up with a fork or something to try to get them a little bit more tender, then it would be, you know, you could bite it and chew it a little bit easier. But as far as the back straps went, perfect. Perfect if they're cut thin, deep fried. The drumstick, the taste is there. It's perfect. It's just really tough. When you, you know, when you take a good bite, you're pretty much chewing it like bubble gum for a little while, but, <laughs> <laughs> but it's good. The flavor is there, like I said, and I'm actually really surprised at how good it tastes. You know, I was coming out thinking, you uh, know, we're going to be eating jackrabbit. It's going to be gamey, but you know, it'll be palatable. This is a hundred percent palatable and, uh, actually surprisingly good. So like I said, I definitely recommend giving this a shot. If you're going to be out hunting jackrabbits and you want to eat one, uh, you guys, you, you know, you could remember also that it's not mandatory to eat them. They are an invasive species out here in Nevada and Endow recommends or they, you know, they suggest you come out here and help kind of maintain the population, control them because there's a lot of them. And when you don't see cottontails, one of the reasons is the jackrabbits are bigger, they're stronger, and they'll outcompete cottontails for a lot of their traditional grounds. So like this used to be really loaded with uh, cottontails and we were seeing nothing but jackrabbits, but that's just how it works. They tasted, I mean, actually pretty good. And uh, if you want to give it a shot, this is definitely one you've got to try. There you have it, deep fried jackrabbit. And I'll tell you guys what, it turned out great. It turned out a lot better than I was expecting, to be honest. And uh, whenever we do these catch and cooks with random animals, I know we've done jackrabbit before, so I already kind of knew what I was going into. But every time, you know, you just don't know what to expect. It's a little bit of a, a surprise factor for turns out good. And, um, you know, we've cooked things before that just weren't good. Like we, you know, we cooked a big shad one time. We even fried that and it wasn't good. And we tried some like crazy fish from a store one time that wasn't good. But um, that right there, I gotta say, was actually surprisingly good. But I really thank you guys for watching. We're gonna be doing more catch and cooks here in the future. Other than that, I thank you guys for watching and I'll see you outdoors.